Hello! Unless you've been in hibernation, you would have heard of the coronavirus outbreak. It's all over the news. You cannot escape it. Even if you wanted to, you can't. Now, because it's all over the news, there's been some ugly developments, especially on social media. There's been a lot of fake news and alternative facts being bandied around. Now, in situations like this, it behoves on medical doctors like myself to actually correct this misinformation. Hence, I decided to do this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe of the drjoe.com. If this is your first time on this channel, a warm welcome to you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And also, please don't forget to click on the notification bell because that is how you get notified of future videos that I make. This video is designed to provide you with clarity as far as this coronavirus outbreak is concerned. I'm going to give you all the essential information that you need to know regarding this coronavirus. And I will encourage you to watch all of the video because towards the end of the video, I provide you with essential tips that you can use to protect yourself from this coronavirus. So we got a lot to cover. So let's get started. So yes, let's talk about the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, in this video, you're going to get an update on what is actually going on. I'm going to talk to you about the symptoms. I'm going to talk to you about the at-risk groups. I'm also going to talk to you about how the virus is transmitted. And more importantly, you're also going to find out what you need to do to actually protect yourself. So, coronavirus outbreak, what exactly is going on? Well, first, the update. The first thing I also need to mention is that, please, you do not need to panic because everything is under control. Most of the confirmed cases are actually based in China. As of today that I'm recording this video, 106 people have succumbed to the virus. Beijing, the capital of China, has recorded its first case. The epicenter of the coronavirus is actually in Wuhan City in China. That's where it all started from. At the moment, worldwide, 4,500 cases have been confirmed, but the vast majority of the confirmed cases are based in China. In the US, 110 cases have been evaluated. There have been two confirmed cases identified in the U.S. so far, one in Chicago and the other in Washington. Cases have also been confirmed in the following countries, France, Cambodia, Canada, Australia, Germany, and Japan. So, what exactly is this coronavirus? Why is this coronavirus causing such a panic all over the world? Well, the first thing to mention is that coronaviruses, they're actually common, they're not new. The coronavirus is actually an RNA virus. The thing is, the usual host for coronaviruses is actually animals. But these coronaviruses are zoonotic, meaning they can be transmitted from animals to humans. And that's exactly what's happened here with this new virus. Coronaviruses usually cause upper respiratory tract infections, so infections of the nose, the upper throat, and the sinuses. So mainly flu-like symptoms, basically. But sometimes, coronaviruses may cause more severe infections. For instance, in 2012, there was the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which is the MERS coronavirus. That was in 2012. But if you remember, if you cast your mind back, in 2002, there was the SARS coronavirus infection that was spreading all over the world. SARS actually stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Now, this tells you that these viruses have been around Every now and again, there's an outbreak. But this current one, this current coronavirus outbreak started in December 2019, towards the end of Christmas 2019. This current coronavirus is a novel one and is been codenamed 2019 NCOV. So that means 2019 coronavirus. We also know that the 2019 coronavirus can be transmitted now from human to human. So what that means is, an individual does not have to have contact with infected animals uh, for them to pick up the infection. Because once the transmission has occurred from animals to humans, then it's now been passed on from human to human. But how does human to human transmission actually occur? Well, that's only possible if the virus can actually replicate itself within its new host, i.e. humans. So if the virus establishes itself in a human, it has to have the ability to replicate itself within the new host. If it does that, then transmission from one person to the other becomes possible. So how does this transmission actually occur from person to person? Well, for a start, the coronavirus is actually airborne, which means you can uh, pick up the infection from coughing and sneezing. 
You can also acquire the infection through what we call fomites. So things like door handles, railings, railings in buses, railings in uh, trains, railings in uh, public buildings, and also elevator buttons. You can also catch the infection uh, by touching an infected person's hand or face. So you picked up the infection. What are the symptoms that you should anticipate? Well, usually they are flu-like. So things like stuffy nose, uh, cough, sore throat, and fever. Those are the most common symptoms that you should expect from the coronavirus infection. However, things can actually take a downward turn when an individual develops breathing difficulties and pneumonia. Usually the breathing difficulties and the pneumonia are the things that usually lead to fatality. But for the most part, Individuals who pick up this infection will usually have the upper respiratory tract infections like the stuffy nose, the cough, the sore throat, and the fever, and they will just ride it out. So, who are those at risk? Well, all of us really, everyone. However, this group of individuals are the ones who are most likely to pick up the severe infection. So, the elderly, people with heart disease, the diabetics, and individuals with compromised immune system. These are the people that we need to really protect in the society because they are more likely to develop the severe infection. So should you be worried at all? Well, not really. You should only be worried if you've been in contact with someone who's recently been to China. Or you should be worried if new cases have been identified near where you live. So if people around your neighborhood, people in your city have now picked up the infection, then of course you have reason to be concerned. But one reason you shouldn't be worried is that the Chinese, as a matter of fact, are doing their best to actually contain the virus within China, within Wuhan. Uh, for instance, they've flown more medical personnel into Wuhan and the Chinese authorities have actually extended the Chinese New Year. And as we speak, Wuhan city is currently in lockdown. What about our own governments in the West? What are they doing? Well, they're actually doing a lot to protect us. They are on red alert and public health experts are actually hard at work as we speak. Our public health bodies are in contact with the WHO, the World Health Organization, and also looking for advice from WHO. Some of the other steps our governments have taken is that arrivals from China have been made to wear face mask. The whole idea is to protect us because uh, people are contagious for days before they actually become symptomatic. So this is a very good strategy. Uh, if you're coming from China, uh, then you've got to wear face masks to protect the rest of the population. They're also tracing arrivals from China and quarantining them for 14 days. So that's a very good step. The new arrivals from China who have been missed, they have been advised to actually self-isolate themselves for 14 days. Another thing that should reassure you is that the vaccine for this 2019 coronavirus will be out shortly. So how deadly is this virus? Well, to be honest, this 2019 coronavirus has a better mortality rate than the SARS virus and the Middle East coronavirus. At the moment, the mortality rate for this 2019 coronavirus has been put at 4%. Whereas SARS coronavirus has a mortality rate of 10% and the Middle East coronavirus has a mortality rate of 34%. So as you can tell by comparison, this one is better. Ideally, we would prefer a 0% mortality, but of course that's not going to happen. So with that in mind, let's talk about how we can protect ourselves. Now, what can you do to protect yourself after all of this? What can you do to actually protect yourself? Well, you can take a few steps. And the first thing is doing the simple things like washing your hands with soap and warm water, especially when you've been in contact with public surfaces. By public surfaces, I'm referring to things like door handles, elevator buttons, uh, the railings, railings that I mentioned earlier on, public restrooms. All you need to do is just wash your hands with soap and water. In the absence of having soap and water, you can use alcohol hand sanitizers. Now, using wipes is not enough. You need to use alcohol hand sanitizers because the alcohol is the agent that is going to deactivate the virus if you've got it in your hands. 
The third thing you can do is to keep your hands and fingers away from your eyes, mouth and nose because once your hands and fingers are in contact with your eyes, mouth and nose, you are actually inoculating yourself. That is how the virus will take hold and establish itself. So keep your hands and fingers away from your eyes, mouth and nose. The fourth thing you can do is if you are going to have contact with anybody who is infected or has recently been to China, I know it sounds rude, but you should wear a face mask. The reason you want to wear a face mask is you need to protect yourself from that individual because the spores of the virus could just be in the air. Remember, it's also airborne. The fifth thing you need to do is that if the virus has been identified in your neighborhood, in your city, then a simple strategy you can have is to stay away from crowded places. One other thing you can do is that you can boost your immune system ahead of time. Okay, so what can you do to boost your immune system? Well, vitamin C has been shown to actually boost our immune system. So you could just use lots of citrus fruits or you could buy vitamin C supplements. Now, a lot of the vitamin C supplements are as good as useless in the sense that they are poorly absorbed. There's been some evidence to show that if you use liposomal vitamin C, you get better results because the absorption potential for liposomal vitamin C is a lot better than regular uh, vitamin C supplements. I'm going to leave links below if you want to get yourself some liposomal vitamin C. There'll be links below this video. Another thing you can do is just have adequate sleep. A good amount of sleep is vital for your immune system. So please not underrate adequate sleep as a measure to protect yourself. What else can you do? Well, you can actually use essential oils to boost your immune system as well. There's been some evidence to show that essential oils actually does improve our immune system. In particular, oregano oil, uh, because it's got thymol and cavacrol, those two ingredients have been shown to actually uh, fortify our immune system. So you won't do yourself any harm by getting some essential oils and start using them. The worst case scenario is that you just have a mild attack and it will just blow over within a couple of days. Tip number nine. Well, tip number nine is actually very obvious. If you've got any travel plans to visit China, either for business or for pleasure, it will make sense to actually cancel those travel plans. You don't want to walk into a lion's den, do you? So please cancel any travel plans you have about visiting China, at least for the foreseeable future. Now, next question, is there any specific treatment for this 2019 coronavirus? Well, at the moment, no drug has been developed for uh, treating this coronavirus. So it's mainly supportive therapy. So your best bet is to prevent the virus from attacking you in the first place. So protect yourself with the tips that I've just provided you now. Now, if you got any value from this video, as usual, please give it a thumbs up, like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Uh, please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. I will appreciate that very much. Now, if you've got any comments, any questions, please leave them down below, as usual. There should be two videos on your screen now. Please click on any of those two videos to get tips on how you can take control of your health. Well, until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.